2.5 application of sets. So now that you kind of learned a little bit about three uh, sets, we're going to start to use them in applications. All right, so um, at Erie Community College, a survey was taken to determine where students studied on campus. Of those 250 surveyed, it was determined that 167 studied in the library, 138 studied in the cafeteria, and 75 studied in both the library and the cafeteria. We want to know how many did not study in either the library or cafeteria, how many studied in the library but not the cafeteria, how many studied in the cafeteria but not the library, and how many studied in either the library or the cafeteria. So that can kind of all bleed together and get confusing. When we're talking about sets, draw that Venn diagram. Because once we can see a pretty picture, we can start to take out stuff from that picture. Okay, that's why Highlights is like the best magazine out there. Who doesn't look at that when they go to the dentist? All right, so we have our universal set. The two things we're talking about are library. So let's say that's L and cafeteria. So we'll say that's C. All right, so remember, in sets, we start from the middle and work our way out. So in the middle, that's both library and cafeteria. So we're going to look for if we have that number. So we do. We have 75 studied in both. So 75. Now we work our way out. For me, I'm just going to move up to the next one. So we have 138 studied in the cafeteria. But if you think about that, if 138 people said they studied in the cafeteria, couldn't some of those 138 people also say, oh yeah, I also study at the library? Because you're not seeing the word only. It's not saying 138 students studied only in the cafeteria. It's saying 138 of them studied in the cafeteria. So it's possible to say, yeah, I study in the cafeteria, I study in the library, I study in the quad, and they would still count me as someone who studies in the cafeteria because that's true. So how do we find out cafeteria? Well, we're going to take our number for cafeteria, which is 138, and we're going to subtract it by those who have already been counted. 75 people have already been counted. So we do 138 uh, minus 75, and we get 63. So 63 people studied only in the cafeteria. Now we're going to do the same thing for the library. So it's saying 167 studied in the library. So 167 minus the people who have already been counted. So 167 minus 65, or excuse me, 75, and we get 92. Now we need to fill out our universal box. So our universal box is always the last thing you're going to fill out. Our universal box is always the total. So total, they ask 250 people. It's always your total minus everything in the bubble. So minus 92, minus 75, minus 63. So when you do 250 minus 92, minus 75, minus 63, you get 20. So of those people who got asked, 20 of them don't study in the library or cafeteria. That's super plausible, right? You could study only at home. You could study outside your classrooms, like how we have at our school. So that's how we figure out our universal set. Always take everything inside a bubble, everything inside a set in a bubble, and subtract it by the total. Now that we have a pretty picture, we can go ahead and figure out A, B, and C, and D. So how many did not study in either the library or cafeteria? So that's the universal set because it's not in any of the sets. So 20 people didn't do the library or cafeteria. How many studied in the library only but not the cafeteria? So library is 92. How many studied in the cafeteria but not the library? 63. How many studied in either the library or the cafeteria? So to find that, 
that means library or cafeteria. That's everybody in our sets, because if I study in the library, that's library or cafeteria. If I study in both, that's still library or cafeteria. If I study in the cafeteria, it's still library or cafeteria. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can do 92 plus 75 plus 63, and we get 230. Or you can do total minus universal set. So we do 250 minus 20, and we get 230. So your library and cafeteria, or excuse me, or cafeteria, that's not the universal set. So that, that would actually be, the universal set would be the complement of library cafeteria. Just some extra information to throw at you. All right, let's talk about three sets. You're like, this is titled three sets. Let's do three sets. Well, here we are. Applications involving three sets. So what this is saying is that we start in the middle and work our way out. Best Buy has recorded recent sales for three types of computer software, games, educational software, and utility programs. Uh, utility programs are like, um, like QuickBooks, Microsoft, stuff like that. The following information regarding software purchases was obtained from a survey of 893 people. 545 purchased games, 497 educational software, 290 utility software, 297 games and educational, 196 educational and utility, 205 games and utility, 157 all three. We're going to use a Venn diagram to answer the following questions. Before we even get into those questions, Let's draw our Venn diagram. How do we know to draw a Venn diagram? Because we're talking about a lot of sets here. We're talking about games, so educational software, and utility programs. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna draw our box. That's our universal set. And then we have three sets here. We have games, We have educational software. And then we have utility programs. Say that's up. Again, we start from the inside and work our way out. So on the inside, it's, it's where all three meet. So it's where someone bought games education software, and utility programs. So that's all three. So we want to look for that in the information we're given. And we are, we're given 157 purchased all three. That says 157, that's a five. I, I swear, all my fives are different. You're gonna see that all semester. My five will look different every time I write it. Okay, now we start from the middle and work our way out. So next, I'm just going to go up the little list here. Next, we have how um, purchase games and utility programs. So we're talking about this region right here, games and utility program. But some of those people have already been counted for. So we need to subtract to get that middle part right here. We need to subtract to get this part. And we're going to get subtracted from? Well, we're going to subtract it from 157. So we do 205 minus 157, and we get 48. All right, move on up to the next one. We have educational software and utility program. So educational software and utility program is right here. That's the bubble we're going to fill in next. So we have 196, bought both, but some of those people also bought all three, so we need to subtract it from that total. And when we do, we get 39. All right, next we have to do, go and just going up the totem pole. We do games and educational software. So we're talking about this bubble right here. So we have 297 minus 157 
and we get 140. All right, now we have all the middles. We have to start working on the outside. So literally, I'm just going to keep moving up in my little um, information here. So next, I have utility programs, so up. So to find that, the total of people who bought utility programs is or 290. But some of those people also bought games. They also bought all three. Some of them bought educational software. So what we actually need to do is subtract everything inside this orange circle. So everything inside the utility um, program circle, we need to subtract. So 290 minus 48 minus 157 minus 39. And for our utility programs, we get 46. Moving on up to educational software. So for educational software, the total was 497. But we have other things inside that circle. So we need to subtract from those other things. So we're going to subtract 140, 157, and 39. So when we do 497 minus 140 minus 157, we get 161. All right, last but not least, we have games. So for games, we have 545. But we also have to account for those people who bought games and bought utility programs and bought educational software. So we're going to subtract from everything in that bubble. So minus 140, minus 157, minus 48. And we finally get 200. Last but not least, don't forget about the universal set. I, tend, I always tend to forget about it too. So let's do our universal set up here. So our universal set is everything inside the bubbles minus the total people they surveyed. So total, they surveyed 893 people. So 893 minus everything in a bubble. So minus 48, minus 39, minus 140, minus 46, minus 161, minus 200. That comes out to 791, by the way, all those numbers. And we get 102. So that's our universal set. Now that we have everything filled in, we can go ahead and start answering our questions. So part A, I'm going to do it up here. Part A, how many people bought none? Nothing, none of these. 102, that's our universal set. How many people only bought games? 200 of them, we have that. Part C, how many people bought at least one of these types of software? So at least... We're talking about just at least one of them. They bought at least one of them. That's actually your total of everything inside. So at least one, that's always your total of all sets, so all circles. So that's 791. All right, how many people bought exactly two of the software? So exactly two, that's where only two p only only bought two things so that's 140 plus 48 plus 39 because that's exactly two and we get 227 all right example three travel packages Liberty Travel surveyed 125 potential customers. The following information was obtained. Uh, 68 wanted to go to Hawaii, 53 Vegas, 47 Disney World, 34 Hawaii in Vegas, 26 Vegas and Disney, 23 Hawaii and Disney World, and 18 wanted to go all three places. Let's use a Venn diagram to answer our questions. Uh, yeah, let's draw that Venn diagram, then we'll get to part A, B, C, D, and E. Alrighty, so we draw our universal set.
And then we have three sets here. We have Hawaii. So we'll say that's H. We have Disney World. I don't know why I did it that way. I just did, so I'm going with it. It doesn't matter how you label it. It honestly doesn't. You can put your bubbles anywhere you want. Hawaii can be on the bottom. Hawaii can be on the right. It can be anything you want it to be. And then last, we have Vegas. So before we start answering questions, let's fill it out. We're going to start from the bottom, or uh, sorry, the middle, and work our way out. So the middle is all three. It's where they all three meet. So they all three destinations, 18 people wish to go to all three. Now we're going to work our way out. So let's go ahead and do, it doesn't matter, let's do uh, Hawaii and Disney World. So this region right here, let's fill that up. So you don't have to um, go in order in the, in the sentences. You don't have to do that. You can go in any order, but you do have to start from the inside and work your way out. So for Hawaii and Disney World, 23 wanted to go to both. But out of those 23 people, 18 of them wanted to go everywhere, all three of them. So we have to figure out the difference. So we have to do for, um, excuse me, 23 minus 18. And we get five. So five people only wanted to do Hawaii and Disney World. All right, next moving on, let's go ahead and um, do Vegas and Disney World. So 26 wanted to do Disney and Vegas. But out of those people, 18 of them wanted to do all three. So we're going to subtract by 18. So 26 minus 18, and we get 8. Last but not least, we have Hawaii and Vegas. So 34 wanted to go to Hawaii and Vegas, but 18 of those people wanted to go all three places. So we do 34 minus 18. And we get 16. Now we keep working our way out to the actual sets of the person who only wanted to go to Hawaii or Disney World or Vegas. Not all three, not two of them, just one of them. So for Disney World, 47 wanted to go to Disney World. But out of those 47, five also wanted to go to Hawaii. 18 wanted to go to all three, and eight also wanted to go to Vegas. So we need to figure out just the one, the single place that they wanted to go. So 47 minus five minus 18 minus eight, and we get 16. All right, Vegas is up next. So for Vegas, a total of 53 people wanted to go to Vegas, but out of those 53 people, 16 also wanted to go to Hawaii, 18 also wanted to go to all three, and 8 wanted to go to home, uh, Disney World. So 53 minus 16 minus 18 minus 8, and we get 11. All right, now we have Hawaii. So 68 wanted to go to Hawaii, but out of those 68 people, 16 wanted to go to Vegas. I think you get the point. So 68 minus 16 minus 18 minus 5. We get 29. Now we have to find our universal set. So our universal set is the total. So they asked 125 people minus everything in a bubble. So minus 5 minus 8 minus 16 minus 16 minus 11 minus 29. So that's minus 103. And we get 22. Now we can start answering our questions. So part A. How many of these surveyed did, um, did not wish to travel to any of the destinations? 22 of them. They didn't want to go to any of those places. How many people wish to only go to Hawaii? Well, 29. How many wish to travel to Disney World and Vegas, but not Hawaii? Eight. 
how many wish to travel to Disney World or Las Vegas, but not Hawaii? So that's not and. It's either I'm doing Vegas or I'm doing Disney World. So if I'm doing one of them, so if I ask you that question, if I ask three people, where'd you go over the summer? And I know, I, I know we're not going anywhere. But anyways, uh, if I asked you, where'd you go? Did you go to Vegas or Disney World? Well, one of you says, well, I went to Vegas. Another of you said, I went to Disney World. And the third person says, well, I went to both. If you went to both, doesn't that count as or? Because I'm like, yeah, I went to Disney and I went to Vegas. So that counts. So we actually have to add up all our numbers because it's or, not and. And is I went to Disney World and I went to Vegas. Or is I went to Disney World. So if I have this group of three people, I can say they went to Disney World or they went to Vegas. Because if I said I went to Disney World and I went to Vegas, that still counts. So we do 11 plus 8 plus 16. And we get 35. All right, how many wish to only go to one destination? So one destination, we have 29 plus 16 plus 11, and we get 56.